Neva River. This is Petrogradsk embankment of Petrogradsk district of St. Petersburg, Russia. The place of permanent parking for the legendary cruiser Aurora, the symbol of Great October Revolution of 1917. Today it's 23rd of February, nationwide holiday, the day of the defender of the fatherlands. And uh, I think this is uh, like a really cool and symbolic day for visiting Cruiser Aurora. The construction of Cruiser Aurora started in 1896. It was lifted to the water in 1900 and uh, launched in 1903. It is served for Russian Navy for 45 years until 1948. Since then, it is staying here on the permanent anchoring and now operates as the museum. Cruiser Aurora is named after the goddess of dawn in Roman mythology. There, in Roman mythology, Aurora renews herself every morning and flies across the sky, announcing the arrival of the sun. So, in other words, Aurora is like a goddess of the sunrise, bringing the daylight to the people and gods. It is also named after another ship, the frigate Aurora, famous for the defense of the city of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky in Russia in the years of Crimean War in 1853-1856. Now let's get inside. Going up. St. Andrew's flag, it's the flag of the ships of Russian Imperial Fleet and Navy of Russia. It's the main flag of Russian fleets. You can see this on all Russian battleships and uh, on the building of Admiralty in St. Petersburg. It was confirmed as the main flag of Russian fleets in the beginning of 18th century by Peter the Great. And it's still the main flag of Russian fleets. On this picture depicted the lift of the uh, cruiser Aurora on water from the dock of the new Admiralty shipbuilding plants. This ceremony went with the presence of last Russian Emperor Tsar Nicholas II.
On this picture, cruiser Aurora depicted during its participation in the Battle of Tsushima of Russian Japanese War in May 1905. It was a major naval battle fought between Russia and Japan during that war. It was naval history's first decisive sea battle fought by modern steel battleship fleets and the first naval battle in which wireless telegraphy played a critically important role. During the battle, Aurora's captain, the captain of the first rank, Yevgeny Yegorev, and 14 crewmen were killed. After that, cruiser Aurora, covering other much slower Russian vessels, became the flagship of rear Admiral Anquist and with two other Russian cruisers broke through to neutral Manila, Philippines, where Aurora was interned by United States authorities until the end of the war in 1906. In 1906, cruiser Aurora returned to the Baltic and became a cadet training ship. From 1906 until 1912, the cruiser visited a number of other countries. In November 1911, Aurora was in Bangkok as a part of the celebrations in honor of the coronation of the new king of Siam. And uh, during the First World War, cruiser Aurora operated in the Baltic Sea performing patrols and shore bombardment tasks. In 1915, Aurora's armament was changed to 14 152mm guns. On this panorama we can see the position of uh, Aurora and 10 more battleships in St. Petersburg on the 24th of October 1917. It is known as October Squadron. At 9.40 p.m. on the 24th of October 1917, a blank shot from Aurora's forecastle gun signaled the start of the attack on the Winter Palace, which was the beginning of the October Revolution. As the continue of that panorama is this diorama where we can see the scene of the beginning of the attack of the Winter Palace, the main imperial palace of Russia back in those days. Don't be surprised that it looks purple or something like that, not green as it is now. Back in those days the color was exactly like this. In the summer 1918, cruiser Aurora was relocated to Kronstadt, a Russian port city in 30 kilometers west uh, of uh, St. Petersburg, and placed into reserve. Here we can see some of the regular daily stuff of life on the ship. In 1922, Aurora returned to service as a training ship. During the Second World War, the guns were taken from the ship and used in the land defense of Leningrad. The ship itself was docked in Oranienbaum port. Oranienbaum, that's not far from St. Petersburg, and was repeatedly bombed and shelled. On 30th of September 1941, Aurora was damaged and sunk in the harbor. After extensive repairs from 1945 to 1947, Aurora was permanently anchored on the Neva River here on the Petrogradsky embankment of St. Petersburg as a monument to the Great October Revolution. In 1957, Aurora became a museum ship, which is now one of the main tourist destinations in the city. In different times it was visited by the first cosmonauts ever, Yuri Gagarin, the first and last president of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, and his wife Raisa, the leader of Cuba, Fidel Castro, and many more. Now, this is exactly that cannon on cruiser Aurora, which is at 9.40 p.m. at the 24th of October 1917, made a blank shot signaling the beginning of the attack of uh, the uh, Windsor Palace in St. Petersburg.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I enjoyed visiting Cruiser Aurora, especially from the outside. It was so nice to walk on it. But uh, just some critics about the inside. You know, there's like mostly the space cleared for the stands with different photographs, with uh, uniforms and some stuff. But there is no any rooms with the recreation how it actually looks like back in those days. So you can make like the real glimpse into those days when it was on the line. When I was in Cleveland, Ohio, the guy, Paul, who hosted me there, he is the head of USS Cod's museum. And there it's mostly like that, just a recreation of how uh, really it all looked like in um, regular days when it served in the years of the First World War. World War. Okay, so I believe soon we will see that. Okay, my name is Sergey Baklikov. You're watching Baklikov Live. All the Russian men today, I congratulate with the day of the defender of the fatherlands. And uh, I wish you to have a great day.